Long QT syndrome is a diagnosis made based on particular findings on the EKG, patient history, and also family history. Additionally, newer tests, such as some genetic tests, can also make the diagnosis of long QT. Long QT is a description of a finding on the EKG. As you can see here with this EKG, the um, electrical signals of the heart are represented by uh, a letter. And this first deflection, which is called the P wave, represents the electrical signal going through the top chambers of the heart, the atria. The electricity then heads down to the normal conduction tissue between the top and the bottom chambers. It zips down to the ventricles, and when it goes to the ventricles, you get these large deflections called the Q, R, and S wave. After that, the heart resets, and the resetting of the heart is called the T wave. It's the T wave which lengthens, making the diagnosis of long QT syndrome. In other words, a longer time from the Q wave to the end of the T wave. Or in other words, a longer time for the heart to repolarize or to reset to allow it to take another beat. Unfortunately, long QT syndrome can be associated with an increased risk for cardiac arrest and concerning cardiac arrhythmias. Because of this, the mainstay of treatment of long QT is the use of medications to decrease the risk for abnormal heart rhythms. Second is the avoidance of at-risk activities such as intense exercise. Third is the avoidance of medications which could cause the patient to be at increased risk for arrhythmias. And last, in some cases we may place an ICD or implantable cardioverter defibrillator. This is a device that's placed in the patient's chest and can sense and treat abnormal heart rhythm should the patient have a life-threatening arrhythmia.